Hadrian's Wall runs through Newcastle and it runs through Newcastle city centre. So it actually goes down what is Westgate Road. And this road was said to be constructed from the stone of Hadrian's Wall as sort of an underlying base layer. There's the Hadrian's Wall walking trail. Over 10,000 people walk this each year and it runs all the way across the country from Carlisle to Wall's End, said to follow the route of Hadrian's Wall. This is the interesting part. So we know it runs along Westgate Road, but if you look at the official route, this sends you several hundred meter, maybe even a kilometer or two off track down towards the River Tyne, rather than along the Westgate Road and through Fenham. The reason for this, I'm not sure. Maybe it's because they thought this is a more attractive route. For these 10,000 walkers each year, they're not actually walking the official route of the Hadrian's Wall, and they're absolutely missing out on a lot of interesting parts of history. There is a lot of parts of the wall that remain and sort of stick up through these. So I'm gonna walk the official route of the wall today from Hedden to Wall's End to show this part of the route. start this walk in Hedden on the Wall and this is located about a 20 minute drive outside of Newcastle. This is the point where the actual Hadrian's Wall trail heads away from the wall. Rather than head down by the river I follow along the main road which links into the military road and the A69 route which eventually forms Westgate Road. So we leave Hedden pretty briefly, start heading out and from here you enter into the village of Throckley. Now Throckley is having some major house and developments built into it and there's a real mix of different properties in this area. As you leave Throckley you head down towards a uh, sort of river, river Dean and then from there we head out towards Warbottle. So this whole road we're actually walking on was formed from the stones of Hadrian's Wall. They were dismantled and laid underneath the road to actually form this road which is why it runs in such a straight and sort of flat line given the terrain is quite varied at this point. And now this, this is really sort of rural outskirts of the city with patches of uh, massive open fields and you can see down the Tyne Valley from uh, the elevated position of this route which really shows you the sort of defensive position this would have been and the sort of you'd have got from this position. And now as we get closer towards the city this suburban rise housing estates start to appear on the horizon. Inevitable major roads you have to cross to get there. So here we are crossing the A69 and we're on the verge of Westington here. And you can see how the landscape drops massively towards the A1 with a steep hill going down towards it. The interesting thing about the A69 is there's this section of dual carriageway with sort of footpaths above it and fences in between. But lying just next to this is a small section of the wall that still remains. And if you're driving in your car, you can go past this so quickly you don't really appreciate what it is. But it's actually a section of the wall which lies just to the side of this um, dual carriageway. This is a, a real official part of the wall, which if you followed the Quayside route, you would completely missed and you would not seen at all. And this, this to me really shows the, um, the issue of walking down the Quayside. Yes, while it might be a nicer route, you are missing parts of the wall that do exist in this landscape. Following from here, we cross over the A1 using this section of underpass that leads into a bridge. And from here, there's another section of the wall which remains. And this is again located in the middle of a suburban housing estate right next to the um, Westgate Road at this point. There's quite a, a funny thing that one of the properties that lived next door to this have seemingly erected their own uh, statue of Emperor Hadrian standing on a fence and looking over this set of the wall. Quite a nice little touch for this. But you really see this sort of landscape around here is dominated by cars with pedestrian overpasses stand out like a long leg stretching above. And again, we, see, we come across the Denton turret, another section of the wall which is next to a car garage. It really shows this part of Newcastle is entwined with this history. You can't really separate this part of Newcastle from the Rue Hadrian's wall as it is the reason for existing and this road existing in the first place. We're now coming up the hill on West Road, which is quite a steep climb, and it's probably the highest point of this whole route as you go through Hadrian's Wall. You come through a number of pubs, and on top of the hill is the phone aerial mast, which, which stands out behind the suburban low-rise housing. The route going down the quayside really misses out on what Newcastle has to offer, and I think the transect of Hadrian's Wall through the city really shows sort of the diversity of the city and West Road is a very diverse location. You'll have shops selling every different type of food you could ever want here and every sort of different takeaway and that sort of cultural impact of the city and 
that history of the city in its own right is completely lost in favour of a riverside walk. Of note, I liked the um, this car garage here. I'm not sure what it was before, or it was always a car garage, but it's got an impressive facade. And along uh, this route, there was this abandoned building that stuck out to me. I'm not actually sure what this belonged to, but it was this really impressive five-storey building, just completely abandoned, leaving the two- and three-storey terrace housing of West Road behind. We approach the Three Towers on Arthur's Hill, which were built between the 60s and 70s of this ambition for a high-rise uh, Newcastle at the point. I think this shot behind is quite interesting, where you see the Three Towers built in the 1960s, and then in the distance... Hadrian's Tower as a sort of the modern uh, skyscraper or modern tower and I, I really love the juxtaposition of this tower that's a real gateway to the city as you come down West Road. It's the three and floor story houses now that's rising up and this tower and its modern sleek design stands all above it. Further to this behind the houses as well you can see parts of Newcastle Helix rising above the site as well. Now coming down West Road we obviously cross uh, St James's Boulevard and enter into the city centre. At this point, the two and three story buildings are left behind and we're, we're greeted by what really feels like a city centre uh, density of four or five storeys. Notable sites along West Road, the Tyne Theatre, the O2 Academy, which is undergoing a transformation now. And we come past Cross House, a notable building and route. So this shows you where Hadrian's Wall runs through very much modern day Newcastle. Again, would be all the way down by the quayside and down the river. And I don't think you get the appreciation of the modern city that actually lies on this route. The next real remaining artifact lies under the railway arches by Newcastle Castle. So obviously the castle itself is an important heritage site, but there also lies this section of Roman wall within the area actually kept safe by the railway arches. I, I walk down Dog Leap stairs and you look towards the side and this is probably one of my favourite views in Newcastle. We cross back up by Dean Street and then head under an underpass to get into the Central Motorway. For along from here, the route runs pretty much in line with Melbourne Street and there's no real notable artefacts along this route that you can see other than probably say for the straightness of the roads or the lines of these roads that we're now coming towards the Usburn. And now this is the one section of Hadrian's Wall where its route through the Usburn isn't as well documented as other places. Not as well known where which part of the Usburn this actually ran through and how it crossed the River Usburn. But I come down into the village green area of the Usburn and we'll cross the oldest bridge over the Usburn, which Unfortunately, it isn't old enough to be Roman times, but it is the oldest bridge in the area. And from here, we head back up underneath Metro Bridge towards Shields Road. And again... Shields Road is... It's an interesting place, but runs, again, in a direct straight line linking into the Fossway later on. And this, again, was the route of Hadrian's Wall throughout the city. So you can see how the modern city really has developed around this this root of Hadrian's Wall and it still shapes the city today, which I think is really interesting to see. Now, Shields Road, I think, gets a bit of a bad rap, but architecturally there are some, some gems that are tucked away along this road. Say, for example, this former bank building and this uh, former pub, which now forms the Edinburgh Cycle Co-op. And just behind the Edinburgh Cycle Co-op is a huge roundabout, but... There's a section of wall that actually remains here. So out the back, there was these um, just pile of stones built into the grass. From here, we walk past what's called Newcastle Shopping Park. This road is now called the Fossway. It runs past Siemens Energy and a lot of industrial employment land, which there's this former pub, now an Italian restaurant, called the Foss, which again shows you the, the historical links to the area. We exit the industrial land and we, we're back into a, a suburban, low-rise landscape. of. This low-rise house is continuing until war's end, where we get a bit more terrace properties and, again, some more 1960s tower blocks. We then enter into North Tyneside, is the almost end of this walk. Finally, we arrive at Sedgenham, 
or I might pronounce that wrong, it might be Segadunum. I always butcher that. Here there's the um, visitor center which forms this air traffic control light tower. Remains of a Roman, I think, fort was located here. And this just sort of shows this overall transect of that city that Hadrian's Wall runs. For the vast majority of the walk, you won't actually be anywhere near these four or five really interesting artifacts. And to me, the city itself on this route is an interesting artifact for its design is linked directly to the wall. With the route not going down this, it is missing out on a lot of history in the sake of promoting the River Tyne and the, the regenerated quayside rather than the actual historical route. 